In the pursuit of designing more efficient robots, engineers tend to look around for inspiration. Why try to reinvent the wheel that nature has spent millions of years perfecting? While the folks at Boston Dynamics are designing robots that move and relatively look like humans and dogs, a team at the Preston Innovation Lab at Rice University in Houston, Texas are looking towards something smaller. And in their pursuit, they ended up pioneering a new field of science dubbed necrobotics. Oh yeah. Strap on in, because we're in for a wild one. I'm Eric Malachite, and today on Science Get, we're going to take a look at their work and dive into what exactly necrobotics is, because, come on, that name is way too cool not to learn about it. In this modern 21st century world, we've built robots that serve so, so many functions, and yet we're always finding new purposes for them. As for the team in question, they're looking to develop robotics at a scale that's smaller than our current technology allows us to build. Undeniably, that's a reasonable endeavor. It's just how they went about actually studying working components at that size that usually raises a few eyebrows, to say the least. It all started with a question the researchers asked back in 2019 when they found a dead spider curled up in their lab. Why do spiders' legs curl up when they die? Lead author of the study, Faye Yap, and her team went to work on finding the answer. What they discovered is that the system that controls a spider's limbs utilizes hydraulic pressure. Spiders do not have antigenistic muscle pairs like biceps and triceps in humans, says Yap. They only have flexor muscles, which allow their legs to curl in, and they extend them outward by hydraulic pressure. When they die, they lose the ability to actively pressurize their bodies. That's why they curl up. At the time, we were thinking, oh, this is super interesting. We wanted to find a way to leverage this mechanism. So essentially, the standard position of a spider's legs is curled up. In order to extend each limb individually, the creature controls the amount of blood they get, and this is controlled via an internal hydraulic system. That's really badass. Now you have two pieces of an equation laid out before you, a team of researchers who have the goal of designing more efficient robotics, plus the discovery of a biological hydraulic system inside of spiders. What is the sum of these parts? It goes without saying that just the discovery of that internal system is merely one step towards what the team hopes to accomplish. The next step would be understanding the minutia of its functionality, and it's here that necrobotics comes in. Necrobotics is the use of biotic materials as robotic components. Any of the RPG aficionados in the audience will certainly recognize the first half of that word. Necromancer is a spellcasting class in many a game, with a skill set that tinkers with life and death. Necrobotics isn't so fantastical, but as the name implies, the biotic materials being used are not from a live specimen. Which is good, because as morbid as some articles and videos make this out to be, you big crybabies, I'm afraid of spiders and I'm fine. It would be a million times worse if the spiders were alive. You see, in order to manipulate that hydraulic system, Yap and her team injected a needle into the center valve applied super glue to not only hold the needle in place, but to seal the injection site, and attached a syringe on the other side to pump air in and out. Sure enough, they were able to extend and contract all eight legs with this admittedly macabre contraption. The specimens they volunteered for this experiment were deceased wolf spiders. According to the paper published by the team in Advanced Science, the spiders were euthanized by exposing them to freezing temperatures of approximately negative four degrees Celsius for a period of five to seven days. I imagine the method was to ensure all internal components remain intact in the length of time because bugs of all kinds are goddamn resilient. Wolf spiders were chosen because they can exert a gripping force equal to their own weight. In practice, the mechanical gripper the team converted it into exerted a peak gripping force of 0.35 millinewtons. Since they, on average, weigh less than an ounce, you can see by the on-screen conversion that the necrobotic spider lost a bit of its strength in that department. As for its lifting power, it was able to lift 1.3 times its own weight. This was tested by pulling wires from a circuit board, as well as lifting another deceased wolf spider like some kind of Adam's Family claw game. They were able to make the gripper actuate about 700 times before any significant degradation was seen in the limbs or valve systems. After about 1,000 cycles, there were noticeable cracks on the spider's joints, more than likely due to dehydration all of which took about two days. The researchers want to experiment with coating the subjects in beeswax to see if this will prolong its use in future trials. Because yeah, Yap and her team would like to look further into this subject. And I know what you're thinking, Eric, 
Is this even ethical? And don't worry, we're going to look into the ethics and the desired results in this final section. I'm going to start backwards here dip into the former, then swing back into the latter with a dash of personal opinion mixed in the middle. The end result the team is aiming for are mechanical grippers that can not only assemble microelectronics, but also collect small specimens without harming them. We train ferrets to run wiring in confined areas like airplanes, but we can't expect them to piece together complex wiring and circuitry. The kind of intricate movement required to perform those delicate tasks with precision are already displayed in spiders, so mimicking them for the robotic designs only makes sense. We understand that many people are put off by the sight of a spider, but from an engineering point of view, the spider's mechanism of movement is very interesting, says Yap. It definitely warrants taking a closer look at these creatures and learning more from them. Arachnophobia is a thing for a reason, and yeah, look at me, that's me, to say that a lot of people find spiders off-putting is a fair assessment. But like it or not, they are living creatures. According to the researchers, there are currently no clear guidelines in the literature regarding ethical sources and humane euthanasia of spiders. Likely, if necrobotics is going to continue as a field of study as the team plans, this will need to be addressed. All animals have some place in the greater ecosystem and will have some voice advocating for them in the case of mistreatment. Let's just hope it isn't PETA, in this writer's opinion. It's at this point that I'd like to highlight the fact that throughout much of the Middle Ages, autopsies were illegal in Europe. As a result, there was a delay in any kind of advancement in the medical field for over a century. What I'm trying to say is that sometimes we need to let our toes slip over that ethical line to find real progress. Within reason, of course. One can cite plenty of times throughout history where important medical breakthroughs were made at the cost of human rights violations, and certainly no one is calling for that here. But something like necrobotics that at surface level seems macabre and unnecessary yet actually serves a purpose these are the things that I feel we shouldn't shy away from. And of course, establishing ethical guidelines within which researchers should operate is a great idea, while still allowing them to, in fact, operate. Yap and her team are hoping that future research in the field of necrobotics will see them using different arachnids, since at this point, developing complex robotics at the scale of insects is all but science fiction. We're going to need to rely on deceased specimens to provide biodegradable examples of pneumatics and joints that we could benefit from studying further. So no, sorry, no necrobotic zombie people in the future. Darn. Boston Dynamics already made a humanoid robot without the need of pumping air into a cadaver. But that's where I leave it up to you. Where do you land on the subject of necrobotics, yay or nay? Is anyone else at all reminded of that hand monster that dwells on the ceilings of certain Zelda dungeons? Let us know in the comments down below. Be sure to do all that algorithmic jazz and like, share, and subscribe. We have a Discord now where we discuss future topics and share amateur astronomy photos. Come on by as well as check out our, oh, hello. Look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. Until next time, I'm Eric Malachite. See you next time, Space Cowboy.